He would say, Lisa, you take your thoughts just like the cops would a criminal, and you just sling your thoughts up against that cop car and you frisk it. And you know, I used to think this is like the cheesiest <laughs> advice I've ever gotten, but I've never forgotten totally. it. Totally. Yeah. Because I got that visual imagery, and I cannot tell you how many times I'll take a thought and go, mm, that doesn't sound like my Jesus. Yeah. Let me put that thought against a brick wall, basically. Is he happy, even holy? Absolutely. You know, I didn't used to think so. Okay. I grew up thinking, you know, I don't know if I ever really heard this from the pulpit, but I thought God was kind of a unibrow librarian, that he was <laughs> just waiting for a chance for us to step out of line so he could smack us over the head with a 50-pound Schofield Bible. Mm. And I did not think happiness was holy. I thought happiness was an emotion that you jettisoned like floaties as you learned to swim. You had to get rid of happiness the more you walked into mm. the deep waters of intimacy with Jesus. And I, it was actually being accused of being happy-go-lucky that made me start studying, is happiness holy? Is it even in the Bible? And absolutely it is. It shocked me to find out God actually defines himself as happy. Mm. The word in Hebrew is asher. In Greek, which Chris can pronounce it correctly, is makairos. And usually we translate those blessed in our Bibles. It's right. what the Psalter starts with. Blessed is the man who walks in the ways of the Lord. It's what the Sermon on the Mount starts with. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Both of those words can accurately be described as happy. Happy is the man who walks with God. Happy is the man who has intimacy with Jesus. God says, I'm a happy God. It's not ha ha happy. It's not, you know, I'm in my skinny jeans. I don't have to wear Spanx today. My hair isn't <laughs> chemically dependent. It's not that kind of circumstantially based happy, which most often I think communities of faith say that's what happiness is. Mm -hmm. I actually heard in many faith settings that happiness was based on happenstance, what happens to you. That's not how scripture defines it. Right. Scripture says happiness is the contentment, the fulfillment, and the delight that we get by walking with God. So like Chris says, it, it, even if you're in really difficult season, grieving seasons, happiness is a covenant state of being for God's people. It is that fulfillment we get by walking with God. Sometimes it's, you know, laughing really hard and wetting your pants because you're laughing just that hard <laughs> if you're my age and you need to bend sometimes if you're really tickled. But more often than not, it's just this God is good, God does good, even though I can't see around the corner of my circumstances. So it's not only holy, God has called us to it. Is there a difference between joy and happy? I, you know, I used to think joy was like the spiritual cousin right. and, and kind of the more appropriate spiritual cousin, yeah. you know, like the, the kid in church who memorizes verses and, and never skips youth group, whereas I was like the kind of wild kid who sometimes miss youth group to go out with boys that chew and do. <laughs> Um, my mom told me you can't ever date boys who, who chew or anything else. Or anyway, do. I thought that was kind of happiness and joy. You know, that happiness was mm. the trite emotion, maybe even the messier emotion, whereas joy was the more spiritual. I was also taught joy is based on the theology, Jesus, others, yourself, the acronym. Right. So I, I thought joy and happiness were pretty divergent paths. If you studied in scripture, they are basically the, the same One side the of the same. coin. Yeah. It is happiness is to be completely content, fulfilled, and to delight in God. Joy is almost the exact same in the Hebrew and the Greek. So they are not divergent. They are actually kind of intertwined. Wow. How do we cultivate happiness down on the inside of us? Um, when I started studying just biblical happiness, I was kind of undone by some of the Christian, basically, psychiatry behind that, I didn't realize that, because you usually hear it's, again, based on our circumstances, and even the, the psychological studies have proven, actually, your circumstances only impact your delight by 10%, what? which slayed me. I thought, I thought the kind of the world and the psychological okay. community would say 10%. 10 percent of what? Say that one more 10 time. 10 percent of your circumstances. So basically what's going on? Only 10 percent of our fulfillment, delight, and contentment are based on that. And that's proven by most yeah. current psychological studies, which you go, goodness. You know, we espouse this as believers, but actually the medical community has proven this, that more than 50%, there, there's some genetic predisposition, mm -hmm. That's predispositions, there's some other things, more than 50% of our contentment and a sense of well-being 
comes from our mind. Oh, and the Holy God. Spirit says, I have not given you a weak mind. Yeah. I've given you a strong I'm mind. Surprised. You study scripture and over and over again. It says, you know, you keep step with the Spirit and He will set your mind on heavenly places. There's two things, and Chris just mentioned it. One is what God says when I said 50% of it is basically in our minds. Mm -hmm. He says, take every thought captive. Yeah. And I used to work for a guy in youth ministry, a real strong Southern accent. He makes me sound like I'm from New York. But he would say, I was in my 20s, and he would say, I bet you 10 times a week, he would say, Lisa, you take your thoughts just like the cops would a criminal. And you just sling your thoughts up against that cop car and you frisk it. And, you know, I used to think this is like the cheesiest <laughs> advice I've ever gotten. But I've never forgotten totally. it. Totally. Yeah. Because I got that visual imagery. And I cannot tell you how many times I'll take a thought and go, mm, that doesn't sound like my Jesus. Yeah. Let me put that thought against a brick wall, basically, and say, is this true? I mean, for example, you know, I'm a 53-year-old single mom. My little girl has HIV. There are times that fears will keep creep into my mind. I'll be lying in bed at night and I'll think, oh goodness, what if a couple of years from now I'm not making enough money and I'm not married and Missy's antiretroviral meds are really expensive. What if I can't afford the medicine that my baby needs to stay alive? And that, that thought is like a freight train. Yeah. You talk about don't get on the train go all the way to the end. But I will take that thought and go, wait a minute, let me frisk this thought. My God says he'll supply all my needs. My, and I just start going through scripture and going, that, that fear is a lot. And so I think frisking your thoughts, the people that right now are going, I don't feel happy. I say frisk your thoughts. Right now, even in this moment, as you're watching TBN go, let me capture everything I've thought in the last yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. Are these from the Lord? Would God say this to me? And then secondly, and this will sound like real Tennessee advice, but get your butt out of a rut. Come on. Some of us get in that place where we're so comfortable being victims and being gloomy and being Eeyore Jr. that we just, we don't move from that place. So we don't have a new perspective. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was at a Christian counselor. I was in a, a, just a really difficult season. And I started telling her, I just, I, I remember telling her, I feel like a piece of bread in a pond full of hungry fish. I mean, you talk about whiny. Wow. Wait, wait. I was like, I just, I was <laughs> in a tough place. And I said, I, I just feel like I'm a piece of bread in a pond full of fish. And you, she's listening, very kind, godly woman. She went, why don't you swim to the dock? <laughs> and I remember being like, oh Yeah. I have a choice here. I can actually get out of the pond. Sometimes it's just moving mm. ever so slightly. And it can be literal or figurative. I mean, yeah. sometimes mm. go for a walk. Yeah. If you're in a dark bedroom by yourself yes. thinking I'm fat, nobody's ever going to love me, go for a walk. Yeah. You know, put down the Krispy Kreme. Go for a walk. It'll get better. But sometimes we stay in this place because it becomes comfortable. Right. And God's saying, I don't want you to be in a place where, where despair becomes your comfort, where tears are your food. I want you over here. I want you to look at me. Sometimes it's just literally moving to a new place. Get your, get your fanny out of a rut. 